wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, high star, angel in glory. Strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sin he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Priest and King, Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. <coughs> Amen. Every morning when I wake up to see the sun, I can't help but think about the Lord and all the things He's done. He meets my every need. You know He's been so good to me. And I can't help but praise the Lord for all He's done. For all He's done. I'm going to lift my hands and praise Him for all He's done. I'll try to live my life to please Him, even though I don't deserve to live. My life has just begun, and I can't help but praise the Lord for all He's done. <clears throat> Now there are many things that I could praise God for. And if I started now until I die, there'd still be many more. But if I could mention only one, I'd have to thank Him for His Son. Now that's enough to praise the Lord for all He's done. For all He's done, I'm going praise him for all he's done i'll try to live my life to please him even though i don't deserve to live my life has just begun and i can't help but praise the lord for all he's done for all he's done I'm going to lift my hands and praise Him for all He's done. I'll try to live my life to please Him. Even though I don't deserve to live, my life has just begun. And I can't help but praise the Lord for all He's done. Worthy. He's certainly worthy of our praise. That's right. Praise, praise, praise. So many times the book of Psalms talk about praising the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. And uh, so we need to try to do that a little bit more. And give him thanks and praise. Yes, Turn your Bibles to the book of St. John. Be easy to find your place today. That's the favorite, one of the favorite books I guess for everybody. St. John chapter 1. So you don't have trouble finding your place. Morning.
St. John chapter 1. Come back tonight. We'll start the service at 6 there to the Lord with them. We'll stand and be preaching. We'll have a good time with the Lord tonight. We're looking for you. Be back here tonight. I always look forward to coming to church, be in the house of God. In fact, the psalmist said, I was glad. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Yep. Get something at church, you can't get nowhere else. Yes, right, preacher. Think about it every once in a while. I, I don't know why people don't, don't go to church. I, I don't know about that, but uh, I don't, I'd get mixed up. I don't know if I'd know whether it's Sunday or Wednesday. If I didn't go to church, Amen. I'm proud the Lord fixed it. We'll get a break every seven days. And yes. Stop that work and things that's bothering us and everything, rubbing elbows out there the sin in the world. Yes. Come to church and worship God and have a good time. Right. And I'm always glad for the privilege to come to the house of God. Well, when I, got, when I get a haircut, last at least five or six months, and to get my haircut and said it's already been taken care of. Already been taken care of. I said, who done it? They won't tell me. And I said, well, it's either somebody that don't have much hair themselves and want to help somebody else out, or somebody trying to get me to slow down on my preaching. <laughs> and uh, I ain't figured out which one it is, but Thank you, ever who you are, paying for my haircut for about the last six months. Amen. Just keep the good work up. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, John chapter 1 and verse number 1. We'll read a few scriptures here and talk to you a little while today. The Bible said, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Yep. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. <clears throat> and without Him there was not anything made that was made. And Him was life, and the life was the light of all of light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Same came to uh, came the same came for witness to bear to witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to, me, to, to bear witness to the light. He was the true that was true light that light there men come to the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world <clears throat> knew him not. He came in his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born to, not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Amen. I'll stop reading that verse 13. My text verse is over here in verse number 6. And the Bible said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. There was a man sent, not a woman now, but a man sent from God whose name was John. Right. Now, if the Lord will help me, I'm preaching a little while today on a man sent from God. Amen. We need more men that are sent from God in these days we're living in now. The Bible said here about John, we know how great John was, or at least, uh, you know, a portion, we know how great he was. He's a forerunner of Christ, but uh, what a man, what a preacher John was. And the Bible said that he came out of the wilderness of Judea preaching, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven to hate. And so John came out of the wilderness preaching, preaching repentance. What a preacher, what a man John was. There's a man sent from God. This man was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. No wonder he is a great preacher. This man had a heavenly calling. That made him preach. I tell you, these uh, 
mama sin, or mama calling papa sense not getting the job done. Right. Right. Now, I know some of y'all wonder what we're talking about when we say that. That means mama wanted her little boy to make a preacher and daddy sent him to school to learn how. Yeah. Yep. And that's not getting the job done. Right. We need somebody that God sent that's got a heavenly calling on their life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and then he had an humble spirit. Oh, God help us to have that humble spirit. But he had high morals. And I'm not going to preach a whole lot about John just saying a few things. I'm preaching on a man sent from God. There's other men sent from God. And so I want to preach a little bit about that. But I ought to say, God always uses a man. Yeah. Amen. I didn't go over too good. I said, God always uses a man. Amen. Right. He uses one man in one place. He don't use two. He don't use four. He uses one man to lead one place. Amen. Right. Now that's Bible. If you want to have a Bible study someday on that, we'll sit down and have a Bible study on it. But I'm telling you the truth. A man sent from God. Amen. Yep. The Lord sent Jonah to Nineveh. And uh, the Bible said he didn't want to go and he paid his family another way. But after Jonah spent three days and three nights in that whale's belly and got out, he went right into the city and preached him. If God sends you, you'll get on the ball. You'll go sometime or another. And they repented and had revival. The Lord sent Ezekiel down the valley of dry bones, set him down there and said, Son of man, can these bones live again? And he said, Lord God, thou knowest. And the Lord said, prophesy to these bones. And he did. There's a shaking. And there's a moving, a noise. <laughs> A lot of things happened, but anyhow, they had a revival in, that, in them dry bones. And I'll tell you the word of God to get the job done. The Bible said if this council or this man, this uh, work be a man, it'll come to naught, but if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Amen. I like that. Amen. Bible said a wonderful and horrible thing committed in the land. Amen. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests by rule of their means and my people love to have it so. Yes, sir. But what are you going to do in the end thereof? We're headed to meet God, every one of us. Amen. How shall they call on him whom I believe? How shall they believe in him without her? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they pray except they be sent. The Lord said my ways are not your way my thoughts are not your thoughts. But he said my word shall not return to me void. That's right. He'll accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Right. A man sent from God won't smooth things over. No sir. You're right. Man sent from God won't deal in crooked business. That's right. And majority of the time, a man that's sent from God has a message of rebuke. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, not every time, but the majority of the time. Yeah. In fact, is most of the time in the Old Testament, when God sent a man, he had a message of rebuke for somebody that need to be straightened out when doing right. And I'll tell you, this Bible will help us straighten out if we listen. Yes, sir. And you know that's right. But my text verse again, let's read it one more time. <clears throat> I might read two or three before I get up. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Yeah. Yeah. And God sent him, he got the job done. Yeah. But I want to get over in the Old Testament and preach a little bit about some men over in the Bible. And 
Bible said one time that uh, Israel wanted a king. It wasn't God's will for him to have this man to be their king. But there's a man named Saul who stood head and shoulder taller than anybody else. And they desired a king. They wanted to be like everybody else that had kings. And the Lord sent Samuel to anoint Saul, king of Israel. Even though it wasn't really the will of God, but uh, uh, the Lord permitted it to happen. And uh, so he anointed him. And uh, you know, a little further over in the Bible, I don't have time to preach about all, but a little further over in the Bible, the, uh, Samuel, the Lord sent Samuel to see Saul. He said, Saul, the Lord wants you to go down to the Amalekites, and he wants you to destroy everything down there. Now the Amalekites was the enemy of God. Yep. And said, I want you to destroy everything, man, beast, king, everything down there. Won't you destroy it? Yep. So Saul started on a journey. And he got down there and started sparing some of the, first of all, sparing the life of the king. That's a mistake. And then he started sparing the best of the flock, the sheep and the thing, ox and things like that. And uh, by, and he, 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 he well, he disobeyed God. That's just put in a nutshell just to say, he didn't know what God told him to do. Right. And the Lord appeared unto Samuel again. He said, Samuel, I want you to go to meet Saul. But before, before that, the Lord said, Samuel, it repenteth me that I made Saul king over Israel. He's disobeyed me. He's disobeyed the orders of God, what the Lord said to do. And uh, said, I want you to go down there and meet him. The Bible said Samuel cried all night long before the Lord. Now, if you wonder why the preacher knows so much about how you've been living, it could have been that he's been with God the night before. You don't ever know. Yep. The Bible said he cried to God all night. Went down there to meet Saul. Here's the way religious folk do. Saul ran up to him. And he said, Blessed art thou the Lord. I performed the commandment of the Lord. I've done exactly what you told me to do. Yeah. And about that time the sheep started bleeding. Yeah. And the ox started lowing over the hill. Samuel said, Well, if you've obeyed the voice of God, what means this bleeding of the sheep that I hear over there? I'll tell you, disobeyed God. And the uh, Lord sent Samuel down there to meet him and tell him what he'd done. And uh, he said he had rejected him from being king. And he's got on over, like I said, I, can't, I got to skip some of this. I can't get over, but I can't, can't get it all. But anyhow, chapter two over. They're still weeping. They're still mourning over Saul. And the Lord said, Samuel, how long will you mourn after Saul? I've rejected him from being king. Get your horn of oil. Go down to Jesse's house. And I want you to anoint me a king over Israel. And he went down there and anointed little David, a man after God's own heart. You know the story. If you read the Bible, you know the story. But God sent Samuel. God's got a man. Yep. He sent him down to meet Saul and tell him what he'd done. And I remember about Elijah and Ahab. And so much could be said about that. We all know if you study the Bible much. You know that uh, Elijah was a thorn in the flesh for Ahab. Just about all the way through. You just study. See if I'm not telling you right. Boy, when Ahab would do something wrong here, here Elijah would pop up. And something else go wrong, here he'd run into Elijah. And he didn't like him. He hated Elijah. Right. But Elijah would tell him the truth. But anyhow, when, when, when they was praying for Ray, the Lord said, uh, Elijah, go meet Ahab. And said, I'll send rain again. Well, the Lord could have sent that rain just as easy uh, without him seeing Ahab. But he wanted, he wanted Ahab to know he had a man of God over there that, that uh, 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 knew what he was doing. Yep. Sometimes the world don't think we know what we're doing. But God in heaven knows what's going yes, on. Sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But anyhow, I don't want to preach about that part. But a little later, a few more chapters over. 
Nabob had a vineyard. I, I believe Nabob was a good man. I, I believe he was a good Christian man. The Bible don't tell us a lot about it. But he had a vineyard over there. And it joined hard to the king's palace. They had found and uh, Ahab wanted that vineyard more, just about more than anything. You know, he went to see Nabob one day and said, Nabob, I'd love to have your vineyard. I, I'll give you what it's worth in money. I'll trade you out of it. I'll trade you something better. And I just want that uh, vineyard because it joins hard to the king's palace. And I, I want that vineyard. I believe Ahab was a good, I mean, Nabob was a good man. We know Ahab was the weakest king Israel ever had. And to add to all that weakness, he married wicked Jezebel. Right. Probably the worst woman about it in the Bible, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's pretty close. But anyhow, the Bible said that, that he won the vision. And Nabob said, God forbid that I'd sell my inheritance. That's an inherit of my father, and God forbid that I'd sell it. You can't have my vineyard. Amen. Well, Ahab got mad. He went back home and laid down on the bed and started pouting. Amen. Religious folks pout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't tell them about I said that, but they do. He went and laid down and started pouting. Jezebel came in and said, what's wrong with you? And he said, I want Nebo's finger. I went and tried to buy it from him, off the worth of it, and even something better. And he said he wasn't going to let me have it. Well, she said, don't know you should worry about that. You're the king, get what you want, can't you? And uh, people might get what they want down here, but I've done said a while ago, we're all on our way to meet God. Yep. Right. It's going to be different when we get there. Yes, sir. We can work crooked things. I'm not saying y'all do that, but, but people, it has been done. I know that. And uh, you can crook around, get things, maybe get what you want down here. But we're coming to the end of the journey, buddy, one day after a while. And it probably won't be long until we reach the end of the journey. I don't know about you, but more than anything in this whole world, I want to be right, Brother Eddie, when I stand there. I want things to be right and I stand before God. But anyway, the Bible said that uh, she said, I'll get that vineyard for you. She set up false witness against Nabal. He hadn't done anything to hurt nobody. But she set up false witness against him. Got them false witness, had a little trial, and they stoned him to death. That's right. For nothing. And uh, she went back and told Ahab, Ahab, get up now, go down and possess that vineyard. Nabal's out of the way. I got rid of him. And uh, he's out of the way, just going down there and get his vineyard. Well, he got up probably happy, I guess, about that time and went down to get that vineyard, possess the vineyard. But God had a preacher over there named Elijah. Yeah. The one Ahab didn't like. Right. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to Elijah. said, Elijah, Ahab's got Nabob's vineyard. He's gone down there to take it over now. And I want you to go down there and meet him. So Elijah took off down there to meet Ahab. And uh, make a long story short, long story short, as we say a lot of time, the Bible said that uh, when they got down there, Elijah said, you killed and to get this vineyard. You've done it crooked. You've done it wrong. And uh, they killed an innocent man, killed Nabot because you was wanting this vineyard. And said, I'll tell you, one day the dogs is going to lick your blood right out there at the same place they lick Nabot's blood up. Right. Because you've done this thing crooked. You can't do crooked and get by with it. No, sir. Amen. Right. God's got a preacher somewhere that sends your way and tell you and let you know where you went wrong, and sometimes people will go wrong sometimes. I gotta go on. I think about Nathan. First of all, let David, let me say this. David committed that awful sin. Y'all know about that. You've heard that preaching all your life. But David committed that awful sin. He he, he committed adultery this morning, and then the, had her husband put on the front line, got him killed. You're right, got him killed, and uh, committed that awful sin. 
I don't know if you ever noticed it or not, but the last verse in that chapter, I don't have the chapter down right now, but the last verse in that chapter where it tells that story, it said the thing that David had done displeased the law. Right, amen. And uh, so the Lord said, Nathan, I want you to go down and see David. I want you to have a little talk with him. So here, Nathan got, went down to meet David, King David. He got down there and he said, David, I want to tell you a little story. He said, one time as a rich man had plenty of herds and flocks and everything that he had desire, had everything he needed. There was a poor man that had one little ewe lamb that he loved and cherished the only one he had. And he said, a wayfaring man came by and said, uh, that rich man spared to take of his flock to offer to him, but he went and got that uh, poor man's one little ewe lamb and killed it for that wayfaring man and dressed it for him and gave it to him. And David got angry about that. He said, Lord, the man that done that's going to have to die. And said, he'll, he'll pay, have to pay it back for fall. And Nathan said, David, thou art the man. You're the one that's done this. Amen. I blessed you to sit on the throne of Israel and I gave you the kingdom and the wives and everything. And if that wasn't enough, if you just asked me, I'd have given him all. And here this uh, wayfaring man came by and you got that little you lamb. You got that man's only wife he had. It's precious to him. Got his wife and had him killed. And he said, you, the Lord's going to take away the death sentence. You're not going to have to die. But he said, the sword, the sword will never, never depart from your house because of this thing you've done. Disobeyed God and displeased God. I can go on, many characters in the Bible, on and on. We can talk about things like that. But uh, I thought about... Uh, when Moses went up on the mountain to get the, uh, to get the Ten Commandments, and this is a little off from the surface, I guess, but anyhow, uh, not much, but the Bible said that he went up on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, 40 days, 400, you know the story. And Aaron, and this will get back to what I was saying when I first started, God's got one man to lead one place, and he don't lead it by two, he don't lead it by four or five, he don't lead it by committees. God's got one man that he leads. Now this will show it to you right here. If you want to see it, if you, if you want your eyes open, all you got to do is look and see. The Bible, and everybody knows God chose Moses to lead the children of Israel. Right. How many knows that? Right. How many? Well, the rest of you know it. Don't, I don't care where you lift your hand or not. God chose Moses right. to lead Israel. Yes. But he didn't give him a helper. He did send Aaron to be his spokesman for him. Which is nothing wrong with that. Cool. We all need help. But anyway, Moses went up on the mountain. The man of God that's leading the people for 40 days and 40 nights. Them people said, Aaron, make us gods to go before us. And so this fella called Moses, we don't know what's happened to him. And said, uh, you make us some gods. We want to follow them idol gods again. Aaron said, pull off your earrings. Give, all them, give me all the good earrings and everything like that. And he cast them in the fire and made a molded calf. And so they got their idol gods set up and ready to go. The next morning the Bible said they got up early. And they started worshiping that idol god and praising the gods of gold and silver and said, this is our God. This is a God that brought us up out of Egypt. And there's a dancer around there and praising him. And the Lord said, Moses, you better get off of the mountain and get down there and see what's going on down there for the mountain. So Moses went down there. See, see, Aaron listened to the people. He went the wrong way. The man of God would listen to God and go God's way. Right. <clears throat> He built them that calf. This is worse than an idol. 
And God sent Moses down there to see what was going on. You know the story. I'm going to cut that off. That's not really the end of the story, of course. But I'm just telling you, God's got a man. God's got a man. And uh, God sent a man here. So my text was, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Amen. And uh, so God sent John. God sent Samuel. God sent Elijah, Nathan, Moses, and all these people. And, uh, well, of course, God sent his son to this world. We know that. The Bible tells us that. He sent not his son to work in the end of the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yep. And Jesus come to this earth. And uh, Jesus preached against things, too. We've got to preach against things. He, he preached against adultery. He preached about loving the enemy. He preached about giving. He preached about praying. He preached about uh, judging others and getting the beam out of our eye where we can see clearly get the mole of our brother's eye. On and on, so many things could be said. And John, the man that I took a text from here, or the scripture took a text from, John preached repentance and he preached uh, against adultery. And he, uh, but he had no more spirit. He said, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the will of the Lord. Amen. Make this path straight. Hallelujah. Scotty used to preach on a straight and narrow pathway. And I'll tell you, it is a straight and narrow pathway. But there's a man sent from God. Yeah, by the way, Paul. How many believe Paul was sent from God? Amen. You know he was. Paul preached against things. He preached against 11 things over in Corinthians. In Galatians, he preached against 17 things. And over in Romans chapter 1, he preached against 23 things. How would you like to have been there that day when he had 23 points? I don't know if I could have lasted them 11. First ones or not, them 11. Much less the 17 to 23. But he preached on these things. We're to preach on things. Yep. We preach against things. We preach against sin and godliness and wickedness and preach righteous living, loving God and serving God in these last days. But there was a man sent from God whose name was John. John said, I'm not the light. I'm just sent to bear witness of the light. And that's a light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And he said he came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave he power, power to become the sons of God. Amen. And so it takes that Holy Ghost power to get birth in the family of God. Yes, sir. It takes the power. It pleased God through the foolish of preaching to save them that would believe. I know I've started to say I preach to the church. I reckon I've just preached to everybody today. Uh, but we're going to sing a couple of verses. Somebody may be here when we come for prayer. Give you the opportunity to do that if you come down to these altars and pray. We'll sing about a couple of verses. And uh, if you need to come to these altars and pray about anything, any matter, just come on down here and uh, we'll be glad to pray with you and help if we can. Stand up with us, please.